Welcome to another Foldit Lab Report. I am BKEP here at the Institute for Protein Design with my colleague Ian H. If this is your first time tuning into a Foldit Lab Report, we produce these videos on the first of every month to tell you more about the science behind Foldit. In the news this month, we are excited to announce that a collaborator has started making and testing in the lab molecules that were made by Foldit players. The team at Behringer Ingelheim will be making 19 small molecules based on Foldit player solutions. These come from the VHL small molecule design puzzles that we ran late last year. Let's take a closer look at what those puzzles were all about. Instead of folding or mutating a protein, our small molecule puzzles are all about designing a small chemical or a ligand that can bind to a target protein. In fact, most medicines you get today are small molecules, and as medicines, small molecules have some really great advantages over proteins. For example, small molecules can be conveniently taken as a pill and absorbed through the stomach. By contrast, most proteins would be digested in the stomach. Some of the goals in small molecule design are just like in protein design. In order for the small molecule to bind to the target, we need to have lots of hydrophobic contacts with the target. It also needs to have a complementary shape that fits snugly with the target protein's surface. But there are big differences too. Compared to proteins, small molecules can contain a lot more chemical options, like esters or ketones, or different atom types like fluorine or phosphorus. Whenever we design small molecules though, we do need to be careful to avoid toxic or reactive chemical groups. The chemists at Behringer Ingelheim sifted through thousands of your solutions, picked the most promising candidates, and then did some final refinement to arrive at 19 compounds to be tested in the lab. Depending on how well the chemical synthesis goes, we could soon have real lab data about how well these small molecules actually bind to the target. If they do bind, they could begin the long journey to become new medicines. The chemists at Behringer Ingelheim also had some feedback about how we can improve small molecule design and fold it. So we've been rolling out some updates to the game. The theme for these updates is a concept from chemistry, and that is rotatable bonds. The most common reason for a chemist to reject a folded solution was that the new small molecule had something called strained torsions. You see, just like proteins, small molecules can also have rotatable bonds. These are bonds between atoms that can spin and allow the small molecule to change shape, just like protein folding. However, even though these bonds can rotate freely, certain orientations are just unrealistic. Chemically speaking, we say that these torsions are strained. If you design a small molecule with strained bonds on a computer, there's almost no chance it'll work like you want it to in the real world. For this, we've added a new torsion quality objective which will detect these strained torsions in your small molecule designs. With it comes a new tweak ligand tool, which will allow you to rotate these bonds to find unstrained orientations. This should allow us to design small molecules that are even more likely to work as effective drugs. And that brings us to puzzle updates. With these new tools in place, we've kicked off a new small molecule design project for a target called KLHDC2. That mouthful of a name stands for the Kelch Domain Containing Protein 2. It's an important protein, but don't ask me why they picked that name. It has something to do with the German chalice and some fruit fly eggs. Just like the VHL target that we've worked on before, KLHDC2 is also an E3 ligase protein. It performs essentially the same function in protein degradation, but it's found in different cell types. The goal is the same in these new puzzles. We want to design a small molecule that can bind to the KLH-DC2 target. These small molecules might then be useful as protact drugs. And what's a protact drug? Well, your cells have a natural process for breaking down proteins when they're no longer needed. A protact drug acts like a homing signal for this recycling system, marking the target for destruction. This can be useful for treating lots of diseases when you want to rid the body of a specific problematic protein. For lots more details about Foldit's Protac project, check out the small molecule entries on our blog. And that brings us to the design of the month. Now, we do have scientists on the Foldit team who are looking at your solutions to the small molecule puzzles. But in this video, I want to look at a solution for puzzle 2132. This is a CD47 binder design puzzle, and we have a design here from Alcor29. So, I like to look at these designs in the protein design 
default view. And this is because I like to see the red oxygen atoms and blue nitrogen atoms that need to make hydrogen bonds. And looking at this three helix bundle, I see very good characteristics of a binder. We have, um, for any design protein, we, we need to make sure we have a hydrophobic core full of orange side chains with lots of blue polar hydrophilic side chains on the outside. And that will make sure that our protein folds. So this looks reasonable. We also have very short loops between secondary structures. So almost all of the residues in this protein are in a helix. So we expect this, this protein will very likely fold up into the three helix bundle that Alcor has designed. If we look here at the interface, we see that it's uh, very shape complementarity with lots of interdigitation. There are, um, you know, trying to look down from one end to the other, we see that there are uh, residues interspersed and interdigitated with one another. In particular, we have this nice tryptophan that is uh, sitting very snugly in this pocket on the target. Um, Likewise, we have uh, the binder protein uh, coming down to, to make lots of contact with this exposed leucine here. Um, so this looks, this looks very good. We like a, a complementary surface between the binder and the target. And we like that there are lots of hydrophobic contacts here. Um, so of course, this tryptophan offers a lot of binding hydrophobicity. Um, uh, along with a couple of hydrophobics sprinkled on these helices, um, as well as some polar residues, which are there to satisfy other polar atoms that are buried at the interface. And remember, these polar atoms are very important to pay attention to. If we bury polar atoms away from solvent that surrounds the protein, we need to make sure that we can satisfy them with hydrogen bonds. If we don't, that will be energetically unfavorable and that can prevent binding. Um, so if we look at this, uh, we see that there are three buns atoms flagged in this design. One of them is here on this, looks like an aspartate. Um, one of the oxygens is, is not making a hydrogen bond. That could be a problem. Um, and then it looks like there are maybe some backbone atoms on the binder, but I'm not so worried about these. I think that maybe some solvent could get in there or maybe this helix could straighten out a little bit to satisfy these polar atoms without uh, destroying the fold. Um, but we do want to be very cognizant and careful about these polar atoms that can be buried when our protein binds. A buns aside, this Design has some very, very nice metrics. This DDG of negative uh, 42 kilocals per mole is uh, very nice. We like to see that. And a very high contact surface area um, of, uh, we have a, a contact surface score of 451, um, which is uh, very impressive indeed. Um, I think we have this maxing out at 500 and uh, that is very difficult to achieve. Um, 451 is nothing to be ashamed of. This. All in all, it looks like an excellent binder design. Um, we would love to see more designs just like this. A reminder to please share with scientists your favorite solutions, regardless of how they score or rank on the leaderboards. We are always interested to see which designs you think are the most noteworthy, regardless of how they score. That's it for this month. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and we'll see you next time.